afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Belkowitz, and I am excited to do a different type of video today. This is a comment on one of my, or uh, uh, an excerpt, is that what you would call it? A blog, if you will, a problem clinic. This was published in 1975 by one of the authors uh, from Concrete Construction, which now is no longer open as a magazine, but was one of my f f favorite concrete periodicals out there. As a matter of fact, we used to publish there. That was the first. That was the first journal that we published in. Right. And that article's right there too. Bill right, Bill. And there's that picture of Bill Palmer. No, of course it was. Oh man, doesn't that break my heart? So I wanted to read this definition, and it's boring reading a definition. I know that, but this, this one warms my heart. I use this today, and I, I want to talk about what this means and the importance of this definition and the importance of concrete construction, which their information is still available online. So I'm reading this from their website. So this was published on July 1st, 1975. So that means that somebody from the concrete construction staff said, you know what? Before I head out on the 4th of July weekend, and this was 1975, so this is one year before America's 200th anniversary, so you know people were partying up. And this person said, okay, before I get out, I want to publish an answer to what is a definite problem in the industry. And the question was, what is meant by the term self-desiccation? Oh. Self-desiccation. It refers to taking up a free water by hydration of Portland cement to such an extent that not enough is left to cover the surfaces of unhydrated particles or to maintain 100% relative humidity, humidity within the concrete. This may occur eventually in some sealed concretes or mortars, but it usually is of no consequence with respect to design strength an impractical engineering. Oh, wow, how have times have changed. And please bear in mind, in 1975, we in America, which this is an American uh, periodical, had not hit the great cement shortage of, what was it, Whitney, 1996, 1998? Yeah, yeah. So when we hit that great cement shortage, wait, excuse me, in 1975, we're still using these coarsely grained cement. The cements that we used, similar to the ones that we used in the Hoover Dam or in those days, where they were slower to react. It took us 28 days to get to 28 day strengths. By the time we hit 1998 or 1996, uh, depending who's right on that one, Whitney or I, dollar bet. Was there a dollar bet on that? No, no, there was no dollar bet. Uh, but when we hit that great cement shortage out here, we were bringing in cements from India and China that were higher, that had a higher fineness more alkalized, and we got a 28-day strength in about 24 hours. And I might be exaggerating on some cases, but that was the case for certain job sites. Now, there is something that we sacrifice when it comes to increasing the fineness and getting those earlier strengths, and that's control this self-desiccation, that we're kicking things off, off so quickly, those thermokinetics and cement hydration, we have to do that at the expense of available water. And if it's hot enough and those are kicking off like a, out of hell, then, I don't know why I didn't say bat, but bat out of hell. I'm trying to clear up my language and I was supposed to say bat out of... So anyway, I'm, hey, at least I'm trying, right? You are. So when we kick off those mechanisms, we consume that concrete and that leads to the emptying of pores, which could cause some capillary pressures and boom! Here's a picture of that. We start in any of our capillaries, any of our pores, the uh, radius on the upper side of the pore is gonna be lower than the radius of the lower portion of the pore. And when we look at that capillary pressure that exerts on closing that pore based on that reduction of water in that pore, that pore emptying, it equals, P capillary equals two gamma cosine theta over R. And while we really can't affect the R, I mean it just decreases as we go deeper into that pore, um, we can affect not only that gamma, which is the capillary tension of water, we can do that by adding chemicals to the concrete, and that's how we can control the self-desiccation, or we can create an internal curing environment, or 
um, slow down those thermokinetics cement hydration because eventually what happens is when we get to those deeper pores um, you are in the denominator so we go from let's say we have a pore of two inches that starts at the top then we go down to 0.2 inches then 0.02 inches then 0.002 inches because our R is in the denominator in that 2 gamma cosine theta over R our total capillary, capillary pressure uh, and stresses, they just freaking explode and they overcome the tensile and shear capacity of our hydrated cement matrix, especially when it gets into that hard and straight and then Bob's your uncle, we crack our concrete. I don't know if Bob's your uncle is the right phrase. I liked it. Did you? Thank you. Okay, so I, I don't even think this is a question. It was a, just a, a great discussion on an awesome problem clinic from Concrete Construction. We're going to include that link down below. Check it out. Did you just do a bear bear meow? Oh, Haley. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ding that bell for notifications. Concrete!